guys and welcome to another one of my YouTube videos. Thank you for clicking on this video. Today we are going to learn a few things, friends. We are going to learn a few vital lessons that will carry you through your studying life, however long that may be. I have one more exam until I finish my uni degree which is insane and so I feel like over the past few years I have learned a thing or two about what works when it comes to studying and what really doesn't. Today I will be sharing with you some of my top tips for studying as well as the things that you generally want to avoid and what has worked for me. Just remember that these are things that have worked for me, they may not necessarily work for you and that's actually something I'm going to touch on in the video so stay tuned, I hope you enjoy this video and let's get started. My first tip is something crucial and it's something that's really overlooked, I think, and that is to find out which learning style suits you best. For some of you, this will come to your mind straight away. You know, yep, yeah, when I see a graph, I can absorb the information, done. And for some of you, you'll be like, you know what, I have absolutely no idea. There are tests online that you can take to work out which learning style you are, and I might try and find some good ones and leave a link down below. For me, personally, I learn best through writing and through reading, and this is kind of like a small proportion of people learn best through this, but it's just what works for me. I do a science degree, which means a lot of our information and a lot of our learning topics are very visual. So we're looking at a lot of graphs, especially for exercise science. I'm looking at so many graphs and so many, I don't know what else you would call them, but I see a lot of images. And for me, I can't look at an image and then maybe listen to some speech about it and take in that information. It just doesn't work for me. For me, I will need to look at a graph and figure out a way of writing out that information. So say I see a graph of this many cats in a household in 2005 versus this many dogs. If I see that graph, I, I mean that's a very simplistic graph, but I, I can't just translate that. So in my notes I will write down in 2005 it showed on average that there were a higher proportion of dogs in households than cats. I've written that down, it's gotten into my mind and it's there rather than just seeing a picture and going yeah cool I know what that means. Find out what works for you. So many of my friends are visual learners, they don't study how I study. When it comes to exams, what I need to do is I look at all of the lecture slides and all of the content and I write notes. I have pages and pages of notes. I will either handwrite this or if I'm pushed for time, I will do it on a computer, but I do prefer to handwrite. I've got one open now for my exam tomorrow that is about 10 pages long at the moment. It's just what works best for me. For some people, this would be the worst idea ever and they really need to draw and get creative and use different colors and sticky notes. For me, it's just I go back to basics and that's what works. When it does come to studying and taking notes, I do recommend getting a little bit creative with it. So get different color pencils and textures, but you don't want to spend so much time decorating that you don't get any of the work done, but it can be really nice to say do your headings in a different color, you highlight the important notes just so they're visually appealing and it's really nice to look at. It then ensures you're more likely to reread your notes because if they're boring you'll be like, I cannot read this. I have been there. I have done that. Trust me, make them a little bit interesting to read. Once you've worked out which learning style works best for you, I think it's really crucial to work out what type of studying environment works for you. And again, this is going to be completely different for everyone. Some people work best in noise, some people work best in complete silence. I'm somewhere in the middle. I like to work on my own, however, I like to listen to, I, it's not even called music, I would call it frequency while I work. Frequency, they're actually really funny and I'm going to leave some links down below and I'm going to put a little preview on the screen right now. Frequency is not quite music, it's kind of noise and you'll see it'll say that it's how many hertz which is how quickly it will go and I just find it's quite it's kind of like white noise so we've all heard that you know listening to white noise can be really good to sleep and things like that it kind of blocks out thoughts. I find this really really peaceful to study to. I can also study to like classical music but I find that I get a little bit too carried away in the music whereas this you don't really get carried away in it, it's just there and it's better than just having silence. I cannot listen to music with lyrics while I study. It, every time I do this and I'm writing notes I end up writing the lyrics. I don't know if anyone else does that or it's just me. Cannot listen to lyrics, music with lyrics as I study. 
but find out what works for you in terms of noise and then in terms of environment. Do you prefer working alone or do you prefer working with people? When I work with people, I am so distracted, I don't end up getting any work done, so as lonely as it is, I work so much better when I'm by myself. And personally, I have two different ways of working. So I will either work at my desk here and I'll sit on my fitness ball because I get really uncomfortable in chairs. I'm the most fidgetiest person you'll ever meet. Or I stand at my standing desk, which is literally just a chest of drawers that I stand at. I usually spend most of my time studying here as I find it comfortable. And now at my university, they've actually just installed a few standing desks as well. So, you know, the world's getting a little bit more ergonomic, but find an environment which works for you. It's no good going into like a basement room where there's no windows and it's dark and there's fluorescent lighting. If you know personally that environment is very important and you're not going to feel at your best working in that environment. I know there are a lot of computer labs at uni that are like that and I just find I feel so drained when I work in them because I'm very sensitive to light and just the fluorescent lighting and everything. I need windows, I need natural lighting, I need nature, I need to be able to look out a window and see a tree or something, you know. I'm not high maintenance, I just ask for a few necessities in life. Try and avoid doing things like studying on your bed. Because I did this the other day and I fell asleep. I am not even a napper, but I was like, oh, you know what, this is comfy. And before I knew it, 45 minutes had gone past and I hadn't gotten any studying done. I know it is tempting, especially if you're studying in your room and you're like a little bit tired or you've got some doms or something, to just lay down and relax and get it done. Don't do it. It's not worth it. Another sort of tip on environment is if you are studying at home, get yourself dressed. So when I'm studying at home, I could quite easily stay in my pajamas all day apart from when I go to the gym and no one else would know, but don't do this. You want to sort of at least just chuck on some comfortable active wear or something because it makes you feel a little bit more put together and a little bit more ready for work. We associate things, we make connections in our brains. Pajamas are associated with relaxing and sleep and chilling out. Therefore, if you're wearing your pajamas when you're trying to study, your brain's kind of a little bit confused here and you may not be as productive as if, you know, you tie your hair back, you have a shower, chuck on some leggings and you'll be a lot more prepared to go. This one could be a little bit controversial. I've watched a lot of these studying type videos because of student life right here and a lot of them say, you know, keep lots of snacks on hand by, keep like carrot sticks and popcorn and all this stuff. I'm going against the grain here guys. I do not snack while I study. It is so distracting. Why would I want to study when I've got a snack right here? And then when I snack, I want to browse Instagram. I want to look at stuff on YouTube. I don't study and eat at the same time. It just, when I'm studying, I'm studying. When I'm eating, I'm chilling out. That's my chill time. So for me personally, to snack while I study is just a really bad idea. If you find that you also get distracted whilst this happens, then maybe it's best if you just don't do that and you leave your snacking until when you have your breaks. Which leads me on to the next point which says study in chunks. I hate that word. I'm going to say study in blocks. This is something called the Pomodoro Technique and it's something that I employ all the time. Basically it involves setting a timer for about 30 minutes. It depends on what you want to achieve and what works best for you. I do 30 minutes and then you take a break after this 30 minutes for five to 10 minutes or <laughs> five to 10 hours, but that's not how it's supposed to happen. This ensures that for that 30 minutes you are completely focused because you know you're getting a break. If you're just like, oh yeah, you know what, I'm gonna do a bit of revision, you sit down at your desk and before you know it, you're five videos deep into YouTube and you found a new YouTuber, yeah, we all know how it works. Whereas if you set a timer, you're like, no, I have this, I have this focus, I'm gonna get it done for this amount of time. And I've spoken about this before in a cleaning video where when I want to clean something and I just can't be bothered, I set a timer and I'm like, I'm just gonna do as much as I can in this time and then take a break. It's really, really helpful actually and I have told a lot of my friends to work in this way and you may think, oh, half an hour, I'm not going to get anything done in half an hour. If you actively block everything out, you know, you just put your frequency vibes on and you're in your right environment, huh? you can get a lot done in half an hour actually. And then, you know, you might take a break. That's when you can have your snack. That's when you can get up, walk around, have a drink, pat a dog, and then you can get back to it. And if you're studying for multiple exams, what is sometimes nice is say you do the one subject in the first half an hour, then you take your break and you do a second subject just so you're not like, just so it's something fresh. I found that to be really, really essential in my studying. 
Just on the snack thing as well, we are allowed to take snacks into our exam in like a clear bag or something. Again, you know what guys, I would recommend not doing this and I, I don't want this to sound really strange so I hope it doesn't, but I see people that come into the exams and they've got like bags of like lollies, chocolate and I get you want to keep your sugar levels up and I get you want to be alert. But again, can you really focus when you've got a bag of gummy bears sitting on the table right next to you? Maybe I'm alone in this, but I just would not be able to focus at all. When it comes to the exam day, firstly, don't freak out. Don't do it, it's not worth it. It'll just get your stress levels up and you won't feel very good. The night before, I know it's obvious, but don't stay up late cramming for the exam. You're better off going to bed earlier, set it, oh, I'm gonna fall off my ball. That's better. You're better off going to bed a little bit earlier, setting an alarm and getting up earlier and then getting some stuff into your mind rather than staying up late and then you'll just feel really groggy and not so great the next day. Again, don't just stock up on caffeine. Don't put a heap of it in your system because the one of two things will happen here. You'll be in the exam and you'll be so jittery and so on edge that you can't actually focus or you will have the caffeine crash and you'll just be like, Ugh. So I'd recommend not doing that. I, I don't want to be like, okay, I'm Miss Perfect here. I don't need to cram because I give myself an adequate amount, amount of time to study before the exam. Cramming, don't need it. Therefore, I get a good night's sleep on the night before my exam. I wake up refreshed and ready to go. I can't drink caffeine, so I don't have to worry about any caffeine crashes. I eat a well-balanced breakfast. I may not go to the gym on the day of an exam because when I go to the gym, I go pretty hard and I need as much energy as I can for that exam rather than for my workout that I'm doing. But I do like to stay active, so I'll go for a walk. I might do some yoga before the exam just to keep my mind nice and fresh. And what I do recommend, and some people will freak out a little bit about this, about half an hour before the exam, I will stop looking at my notes whatsoever. I am not alone in this, but this doesn't happen to everyone in that I sometimes get information overload and it will make me forget everything all of a sudden. And so I find that having that space before the exam allows me to reset and the stuff sort of sinks into my head. It's not floating around in my head. I have a break and then I go and do the exam. So my ritual before my afternoon exams is that half an hour before I always heat up my lunch in the uni kitchen and I watch a YouTube video and then I'm ready to go, I'm fresh for the exam and I dive right in there. When it comes to completing the exam, this is the most obvious thing and every teacher will say it to you, so please don't roll your eyes at me. Do the questions you're most confident at first. It'll give you a little bit of a confidence boost during the exam and you'll be like, you know what, everything's gonna be okay. So even if this is just do one to two questions that you can answer and be like, I know what I'm talking about, it will give you a little bit of a boost. This is how I structure things when it comes to the multiple choice section of my exams. Because I do a science degree, I actually have quite a lot of multiple choice sections and this is just what works for me, may not work for you, but I thought I'd share it with you anyway. So what I will do is I will run through all of the questions and I will put a dot next to the ones that I know the answer to. So I usually put a dot at A or a dot at D or whatever. And I will read through them and then on the answer page I will fill in the ones that I'm completely sure about. I will then run through it a second time and I will put dots against the ones that I'm semi sure about and I'll run through that again and then I'll put the answers down. The ones that I'm really unsure about I will leave blank for a little while and I might move on to something else and then I will come back to them, make an educated guess and then put the answers down. So I'm really focusing on the ones I know best first, getting that out of the way. Move on to the other stuff because usually we have some short answer and long answer questions to write and then I will move back to the ones I'm unsure of and try not to leave things blank. So many of my friends are like, oh yeah, I just skipped that question, I just skipped that question. Remember that you don't lose marks for putting something down and you might even get half a mark or something, but that half a mark counts. Get something on the paper, it's better than nothing at all. One other tip that I forgot to share with you is when it comes to studying the content, if you have to rewatch lectures, try and see if you can watch them in 1.5 times speed. You may notice that lecturers can tend to draw on a little bit, and so when you're watching a lecture, it's really hard to concentrate. But if you put it in about 1.5 speed, don't put it in two times speed, that gets very weird very quickly. If you put it in 1.5 times speed, you'll find that it's at a quite, at a good level for you to listen to and to consume but it's not too fast in that you're like, oh my God, I can't keep up, I can't keep up. And you get through the content a little bit quicker. 
So I hope these tips help for you. They've certainly helped me in my journey. I have been doing exams now since 2005 because we start doing them pretty early at my school. And so to think that this is my final exam for I don't know how long. I probably will end up going back to uni, but I don't know whether postgrad necessarily has exams. This could essentially be my last exam ever, which is a bittersweet feeling. I'm the type of person that doesn't mind doing exams. Like I say to everyone, the things that are supposed to make you anxious in life don't make me anxious at all. Exams, public speaking, all of that yada yada doesn't make me anxious. It's the stuff that shouldn't make you anxious, totally makes this girl anxious. But just chill out, you know, it's not, it's not the biggest deal that it may feel like in your head. As long as you keep up with the content during the semester, you're going to be okay. And if you don't keep up with the content during the semester, you're kind of doing yourself an injustice, guys, you know. Anyway, I hope you like this video. I hope it can help some of you because I, that's why I made it, I suppose. And wish me all the best for my exam tomorrow. I will definitely be letting you know how it goes. If you've got any tips that you can share with us all, please leave them down below so we can all share them together and all see them. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet subscribed and I will see you all in my next video. Wish me luck, guys.